Hey friends, this is Kurt from Phototechnic Educators. We're going to talk a little bit about camera equipment today. You know guys, whether you own a Nikon or a Canon or any other particular model, what I need you to do is sit down with your camera and your manual, manual and read it from cover to cover. There is so many functions, so many menus, and these digital cameras compared to a, just a straight easy to use film camera that you are really going to need to study, study, study. All right, guys, whether you have a camera with a strap on it or a camera on a tripod like this, again, all I'm doing is just helping you out with some of the different functions of our cameras today. We're going to incorporate what I call a checklist, whether it's mental or you have an actual sheet of paper and you check it off. It's the amount of lenses you're going to use. It's the CF cards that you might take with you. And when you're packing them in your camera bag, it's to put them in the same slot, same time, so that when you're ready to leave, you can look quick and realize I'm missing something. Go find it. All right, guys. So basically, what are we going to talk about? One is a little rag. We want to make sure our lenses are cleaned off, right? Front and back of the elements. Few things that are what I use is taking your lens cap and actually writing on the back of it what millimeter lens this works. So that way, if I'm looking for lens caps and, and with my Nikons, they're different sizes, I can put the 7300 and I've got the cap right with it. Another convenience. You know, you got all those CF cards and you're going to put them in your camera and you got to do it quick and you got to do it fast. What I did is I took in the top corner, number one for one, number two for two gig cards, obviously four for a four gig card and I have one eight. Right now, I still like using that one gig card. It gives me a break after 43 images. Let's talk a little bit about formatting. All right, so we're going to go into our camera. We're going to turn it on, open up the back cover, slip in our CF card. And guys, here's what I'm talking about. I know that that number and there's a little bar that makes it easy for me to realize that's the proper way to put in that CF card. Realize, do not force anything. If that card is backwards, don't force it. It's got to go in very easy. So I'm going to close my cover. What am I going to do for number one? I'm going to format. So for me, I want to double check. Do I have any images on this disc? Maybe it's something of a prior session. Maybe I was outside doing some outdoor photography. You want to make sure that there's no images on your disc. The other thing now is I'm going to go to my menu button and I'm going to format. Format does nothing more than cleans or erases all the information on that sensor. So I'm going to go format. I'm going to enter. It tells me that all images will be deleted. Yes, I do. I'm going to hit enter again. It's going to format. I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to enter, curse down to yes, enter. It takes a few seconds, all right? Make sure you turn off your camera before you open up the back and before you take out your CF card. And by the way, if you're going to carry some of these in your pockets, make sure you use a case, whether it's one that you can put four, six, eight of them, or just single them. I'm going to take one of these, put in that extra card, and this goes into my pocket. All right, we're going to put in my next card. Same thing. Push it in, close my cover, turn it on, double check that I got in. Oh, no images. I'm going to hit my menu button and press enter, and I'm going to double format this once again. The reason why? I want to have a clean slate so when I'm out on the job, my items are all ready, my CF cards are all ready to go. All right, we're ready to go photograph. So let's talk a few of the functions, some of the menus that we have in our cameras. As you can see, we've got many, many different options. That's where 
that manual is going to come in, guys. So what I'm going to do is skip a lot of them, but the ones that I want to talk the most about are the ones right in here called ISO. What is ISO? International Standards Organization. Forget about all the rest of the stuff, but what it is, it's the sensitivity of the light going on to your sensor. All right, so as we take a look, we got ISO ratings on my particular camera as low as 100. We can keep going up, there's 320. We go up higher, 640, H1, H2, happens to be my highest rating on my D2X. Realizing those brand new D4 Nikons, yeah, I think it's like 125,000 ISO. I've heard on the brand new Canon 5D, I believe it is, something like that, 125,000 ISO. What a way to use your cameras in low light conditions. All right, what else are we gonna do? I'm gonna go back down and just relate a little bit of what these ISOs are. If it's bright, bright sunny day, I'm gonna use 100, maybe 125, maybe 200, depending on my shutter speed f-stop combinations. All right, it's mid-afternoon, I'm in overcast shade, I may be in that two to four, maybe 640 range. Evening, dusk, I wanna be more in that 800 on up range. Gotta realize, the higher that ISO setting that you put on your camera, such as that 800, or H1 or H2, you're gonna get grain. And grain is nothing more than noise on that image. So, the cameras are pretty smart. And what they do is they build a little blur into that to help you out. But what it does, it also blurs your image. So be, real, be careful in that, A, you may have to use a good sturdy tripod and bring down your ISO settings to a more manageable rating that you can work with and won't have so much of that grain. As you notice, I have other items on my camera and that's called mode. What is mode? That is nothing more than the different settings of our camera. We can be on M for manual. Again, I need to press the mode button, turn my wheel, I can be on P for program. I could be on S for shutter priority or A for aperture priority. What does all this mean? Essentially, A for aperture. I'm going to set my aperture. I can be at maybe F4.5, maybe 4. I'm going to have a very, very shallow depth of field. Let's say I'm going to be out doing some scenics and I'm in the mountains and I want everything from my feet all the way back to the God's country, I may want to be at F16. I want everything in focus, all right? What is my standard? F8. So if I turn it on, I'm going to be again somewhere around F8. When you're on aperture priority, realizing, folks, that the camera is going to set the shutter speed. So let's say you're out doing some action. Let's say you're going to do the grandkids on the soccer field. Well, I'm going to go back to my mode button, and I'm going to go to S for shutter speed. Here's where I may now want to have that greater amount of a shutter speed. Again, 320, 500, 640th. That's how fast that shutter opens and closes and the camera is going to pick the f-stop or the aperture that's going to work the best. What's the other two? Well, M for manual. That's where I'm going to do all the thinking. I'm going to pick the actual shutter speed and the actual f-stop or aperture rating. Again, there's a meter inside my camera. I want to have everything at a zero rating if I'm confused, I also can use an incident or reflective meter to help me out. What was that other one? Well, guys, I just really don't do it. 
It's P4 program. The camera does all the thinking. It's going to pick the shutter speed. It's going to pick the f-stop. It's going to pick everything. And I'm not into P for program. I love A for aperture. I'm going to tell the camera what I really want it to be. I want to be at a slight, slight in focus, out of focus called our depth of field. I may pick that 5.6. I'm doing portraits. I want to make sure they're all in focus. I'm going to be at 7.1 F8. What is that 6.3, 7.1? It's nothing more than the third stop ratings between 5.6 and F8. All right, we've talked about our mode. Obviously, we got our on, our on and off. Obviously, we have our ISO ratings. Let's talk about quality. Quality is the information that the sensors are going to pick up. I like to use R for raw. And it's not going to say R, but it's just going to have raw. What raw does is gives me all of the information that I can get into that sensor onto that CF card. All right? There's another one called JPEGs. And if I take it off from the raw, I've got fine, I have normal, and I have basic. I am not a JPEG only shooter. There's too many times my lighting conditions may be wrong that I'm not going to be able to get a perfect exposure and a perfect print. So I'm going to use raw and I'm also going to use raw and basic. So basically internally in the camera, what I'm doing is essentially saying I want to have all my information as raw and as a basic JPEG just in case. Realize guys, I'm just photographing the back of the wall. You're not going to see any picture images in here. All right, white balance. Oh my goodness. Okay, what is white balance? White balance, as you can see, the pre is blinking, is a way for me to set my camera when I'm using strobes. All right, internally in the camera, it will, I just want to say justify everything together. All right, I'm going to go back to A for auto. Most of my outdoor portraits, most of my scenics, I'm going to use A for auto. However, there's times that I do need to be more specific, and I am going to use one that is shade. And maybe I'm in a shady environment, and I'm going to be staying in that shade environment. All right? I can use the shade button. Or I was into another scenario, and we were into some very heavy fluorescent. And using that fluorescent kind of takes out the green that can show up. So let's be careful where that white balance is set. So it's very easy to accidentally press that little button and move it. Be cognizant, always looking at your information back here. Realizing too, if you tip your camera, sometimes on the top window, but I know for sure through the viewfinder, you also will have the same kind of information. All right, guys, we've talked a little bit about that. We've talked a little bit about different lenses. We've talked about cameras. Let's talk about why I use a tripod. Maybe I'm outdoors and it's kind of overcast and I really don't want to be on a very high shutter speed. I want to be in a lower shutter speed. I'm not that strong that I'm going to be able to hold that camera perfectly still. Having that three-legged wonder makes it still. All right? Now, in that scenario, I also have a tilt and revolve base. I want to do a vertical picture. All I have to do is turn my camera. I want to go back to horizontal. All I have to do is go back to horizontal. Very, very consistent, but also makes life much easier that I'm not changing the tripod. I happen to use a Bogan um, handy grip, I guess they're called, and Within that, everything is in the same plane between the vertical horizontal. All right, maybe 
you don't want to carry that tripod, there is a little critter called a monopod. And essentially, a monopod will give you that up and down, whatever you need it, all right? And again, I would take off my brackets and mount that to my monopod. For right now, I'm not going to be relating to it, so I'm just going to collapse it and leave it here on our table. All right, so let's just kind of summarize a little bit. We have, of course, our camera. We have our manual that we're going to study, study, study. Every once in a while, something in the back of that manual is going to pop up, and you're going to wonder, what is? All right, let's talk about your camera settings. Let's talk about one that's called mirror up. Let's say that you're going to photograph something that you want to have that camera to be very, very still. Setting this camera on mirror lockup, it's going to lock it up, but you've also got to go back to one more little item way in the back, up here in the little, um, I'm going to call it menu buttons or menu wheel, it says mirror up. So literally when I click it, it's going to pop the mirror up, nothing's going to happen to it, it's quiet and I'm going to hit the button again and that will essentially take the exposure. All right, I want to make sure that also I'm off on that when I don't need it. All right, you notice right now I'm on format. I would just kind of hit my little buttons and make sure that it's on the side menu that I don't accidentally hit menu. All right, we talked in, in one of our other series by my wife Andy. She might have talked about deleting, talk about formatting. We've already talked about that double format, right guys? All right, what happens if you want to start taking images within your camera and hit D for delete? Well, you can do it, but it isn't the best. I would rather prefer that you hit D for delete in your camera or in your computer. All right, let's go into one more item here. I want to cover something else in our white balance. Remember I talked about my quality, but my white balance being A for auto? Just happens that this zebra card will help me out once I take a picture of it, is a way of going back again in the computer, clicking on your gray, your white, and your, and your black, and that will, let's just say, coordinate everything together. But maybe you're just a little bit confused to what is a good exposure or not such a good exposure. It's really looking at the histogram. And if you really look at it, we want information on the far left, far right, and right down the middle. Whether it's color, black, and white, we want information in all those three zones. In this particular card, you're going to see a half a stop, stop and a half, or even two and a half stops. You notice that we got all the information is all on the far right, very, very little on the left. You're going to have problems in printing these three uh, scenarios here. Half a stop under, half a stop under. Again, more of the information is coming to the left side instead of being right in the center. Talked a little bit earlier about fluorescence. All right, we have auto white balance, daylight, shade, fluorescent, incandescent. Again, these are different lighting conditions that you could be in. Let's just say that you're in a warehouse or you're into a area that's got all fluorescent lights. Again, by setting your camera under the fluorescent, and that is back here to the white balance, remember that, all right? That's gonna help out taking some of that green cast out of your pictures. So what is a perfect exposure? It's when the highlights, the shadows, and those gray midtones are all in that perfect scenario. Are we always perfect in every exposure? No way. Again, that's why I like to shoot on raw. It's a way of adjusting all those, all those exposures in the camera or in the in the computer. It's a way of adjusting all those exposures in our computer so it can give us a better result at the very end. All right, 
remember, we want to watch that histogram. So I'm just going to take a picture of the wall. All right. I'm on, still on mirror up. I'm going to click it again. I have an image of the wall. If I click through this, here's my histogram. All I've got is just something down the middle. Why? There's really nothing that's distinguishable between black, white, or gray. All it is is just a mid-tone. So again, if I'm outdoors, I want to kind of watch a histogram. For me right now, guys, I want to take and move this back to C or S for continuous, C for, I'm sorry, S for single, C for continuous shooting, and that way I have, again, my normal systems. We can use that 18% gray card. There's uh, different disks. There's all different sorts of using some kind of a way to let your sensor know I have white, gray, and black. Let's say you're doing a wedding. You got a groom in a black tuxedo. He's got his white shirt. Black, white. Perfect. That will work also. All right. Double check. Nothing else. You got problems? Grab that incident reflective meter. And this also will help you out by just taking a meter reading of that scenario or wherever that location is. All right. Let's kind of summarize a little bit, guys. You got to know your camera equipment whether it's the Nikon, whether it's a camera, whether it's one of these little point-and-shooter compact cameras, you got to know what the different functions are. you got to bring that manual back out. you got to sit down with it. Yeah, you can always find where the on and off button is, but in some of these, there's a way of viewing of what you have photographed, and that's nothing more than moving a little button in the back. If we tip it over, in this particular one that we have P for program, TV is not TV that you watch, but it's your shutter speed priority. AV is aperture. M is manual. And honestly, C, I have no idea what this little camera is. What we do also have is P for program, A for auto. Very, very seldom am I going to even run this camera on auto and program that I'm going to select that A for aperture and set my camera for that. All right, we're also going to know what your lenses can do. Each one of your lenses, one's going to be a telephoto, one could be a fisheye. There's going to be others that are going to be in the mid ranges. Each one of those is going to give you just a slightly different exposure because the glass within that lens may be just a little bit different from this particular one that is a 18 to 70 versus my longer 70 to 300. Is it, none to, is it something that you can really, really see in the camera? No. Once you get into the computer, yes, you could essentially see a little bit of a difference. Very little. All right. Let's also, when we get back to using our camera, Let's get off from that P for program. Let's think. Let us do what we want to do. Get off P program and go back to A for aperture. Let the camera pick the shutter speed. Doesn't hurt to carry a little wiper. Once in a while you get crud on these. You want to take it, clean them up, make sure your equipment looks nice and clean and it makes it does it make it easier taking pictures? No, it just looks nicer. All right, read your exposures. Remember I talked about that histogram. All right, we're going to bring up an image. Well, we don't want to format it, but we're going to look at the histogram, and we want to make sure that we got information on the left, middle, and the right. Again, remember I just photographed the wall. All it's going to do is give me that gray tone. All right, we're going to keep... In our mind, not only that exposure readings, but we also got to do something with those CF cards. And it's called backup, backup, backup. The minute that you've got these finished up, you want to go back to the computer, you want to download them, you've got to back them up. Because the next time you pick up one of your little CF cards, 
slip it into your camera, and you're going to go out and start taking pictures, maybe you've got information on that card, and it doesn't say folder contains no images. It could be all those scenic pictures. It could be the kids' soccer pictures. It could be your friend's wedding pictures. Make sure that you're going to go into the menu buttons and you look at your preview before you do what we call format. Again, double format. All right? I kind of like to have a checklist, a mental checklist of what my camera is going to do. For me, I'd like to take it off from the format. All right, when I'm not needing it, I'm going to turn it off. However, I can leave it on quite a bit. I've got backup batteries that are already charged. All right, I've got a camera bag that, guys, I'm going to put all my equipment in, in the same locations. So when I'm ready to leave, I can do a quick look. Yep, everything's there. Zip it up and way to go. So let's have fun. Let's be safe. Watch out for no trespassing signs when you're out on the road. You never know. They may want you out of there. So be careful. Is that old adage, ask for forgiveness, then permission? Yeah, it's up to you. Again, realizing you want to be safe. You want to be safe. And shoot plenty. You know, guys, click away you want, but edit edit heavy. You don't need to keep the other 18 pictures when you only need one or two. So guys, thanks a lot for joining me with Phototechnic Educators. We'll see you again next time. And I believe what our next series is going to be is composition techniques, depth of field, strobes, reflectors, camera settings, and different lens choices. We'll see you later. Bye now.